if you look at the rest of the auto industry, I would expect um, some of these companies are going to go out of business as as we transition to electric and autonomous technology, because not every automaker is going to be successful. Certainly many of them are about behind today. Um, and we think this could be a more consolidated market in the future, particularly with autonomous taxis. We think there'll be geographic monopolies. Um, so, so I think that um, you know there there is a lot of value out there to grab for companies like Tesla. We think this should be worth uh, two trillion dollars in the equity markets today. Hey, I'm Stephen, and this is solving the money problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So later today, Tesla reports their Q3 2020 earnings. I'm expecting a record profit, record revenue, record, record, blah, blah, blah. You guys get the idea. I'll be live streaming the entire event, so I'll post a link to that very soon. Keep an eye out for that. In this video, I'm going to react to a few clips of ARK Invest Tasha Keeney discussing her thoughts leading up to Tesla's Q3 results. And spoiler alert, once again, we'll get to see a great encounter between the short-term thinking of the mainstream finance media and the long-term thinking of people who actually invest rather than gamble in the stock market. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you live in the US and would like up to two free stocks valued up to $1,600 each, use the link in the description to Webull and deposit $100 in your account. Each of these stocks will be a minimum of $8 in value. So if you suck at math, that is a 16% ROI on 100 bucks. Not bad. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. Oh, and by the way, if you're new around here, I just want to point something out. Just because Tesla's likely to have a record-breaking quarter doesn't mean the stock's going to go up. In fact, the stock could do anything at all. And if history is anything to go by, odds are if Tesla does well, the stock goes down. Not investment advice. I just wanted to point that out because some people seem to be under the false impression that a good quarterly result means the stock goes up. It doesn't. Tasha Keeney is an analyst covering Tesla, Tasha, great to have you back on the show as always. So what's the big number we're looking for tomorrow? What's the most important thing that we need to hear from Elon and the team at Tesla? Well, as you know, Oliver, we've talked about this many times before. I'm most excited to hear about their plans for autonomous robo-taxis. Um, so uh, recently, Waymo announced that they're going uh, fully commercial on their robo-taxi plans in Arizona. They're going to let um, the public into their vehicles that have no driver in them for the first time. Uh, following that announcement, Elon Musk said that he was going to release a full self-driving beta version um, to some expert drive customers this week. So um, I think that's that's really exciting news. Um, I, I'd love to hear any any update on their plans to to roll out that network. Um, and we've actually done some work to show that uh, ride hailing, even with human drivers ahead of full autonomy, um, could be a very profitable business opportunity for Tesla. So that's what we'll be looking for. I'll be fascinated to see whether or not Tesla actually discusses their autonomous plans in any more detail on the earnings call. Remember, this is earnings related, so it may not even come up. But keep in mind, Tesla recently, as of yesterday, pushed a new rewrite of full self-driving, which is a ground up rewrite, completely different to the existing system, to some early testers. So soon that's going to start making its way across the entire fleet. Maybe we'll hear more about that. Maybe we'll even hear more about the potential for Tesla to launch a ride hailing network with human drivers in preparation for their robo taxi network. I think Tesla has been um, increasingly focused on, on autonomy, certainly much more so than other automakers. Um, I mean, we think their their strategy of, of using their customer cars as R&D centers to collect data um, is, is a smart one. And it's it's currently unmatched by uh, other automakers or other technology players. Um, so, so yes, I, I think that they, they do see this as, as a big opportunity ahead. Um, we think that autonomous taxis could um, undercut uh, personal cars um, and cost roughly a tenth of the cost of a taxi today. So this will be very disruptive. It'll give um, very uh, cheap point-to-point -point mobility uh, to a lot of people. Um, and I think it could it could totally change how you and I get around. Oh, it sure will change the way that we get around. This is going to be a huge disruption. If you guys haven't seen, I'll put a card in the corner. Check out my video recently discussing what happens when people migrate and move to using transport as a service rather than personal vehicle ownership. Okay, so when we think about well, what's the, uh, the kind of agenda, do you view this as being something that's at the top of the list uh, in terms of what's market moving? I know you guys have the big visionary view of Tesla over the longer term. Thinking about those things has been the right move, it appears, judging by the market. Now that we've run this far, is there not gonna be like a number or something that people gotta focus on this time? Like we used to be obsessed with free cash flow or profitability or what are the numbers that we got to look for tomorrow or has the market moved on from those concerns? 
I don't want to shoot the messenger, but man, it's so painful to see this short-term thinking. It's like, oh yeah, quick, what's the number this quarter we need to see? Otherwise, I'm selling all my stock because I can't infer from here how they're going to be doing in 10 years. But tomorrow, next quarter, next year, come on, quick, short-term, what is it? What's the number? Come on, what's what's the scoop? Tasha, tell us the scoop. What do we need to see tomorrow? Yeah, I think, I think a sh more short-term view, um, which we won't necessarily take, again, we're long-term investors, um, I think that others others will be looking um, to the profitability characteristics. Of course, last quarter, um, you know, Tesla sort of achieved uh, enough of those quarters of profit profitability to um, be considered for S and P um, inclusion, and then uh, you know, sort of because of qualitative factors um, that did not happen. So I, I think that people are still focused on that. Um, automotive gross margin is a number uh, X credits that, that many analysts will be looking at um, to see how things are going there. But, you know, again, from our perspective, uh, we just want uh, Tesla to put to invest as much money as possible into getting cars on the road because um, the autonomous opportunity is by far the greatest opportunity ahead of them. It's going to be larger than the auto industry, larger than today's energy sector. Um, that's the type of opportunity that we're looking at in the future. I just love to see the contrast here again, the short term versus the long term thinking. Ark here are fully aware that Tesla's been laying the foundation to absolutely dominate autonomous vehicles in the future. Meanwhile, Wall Street, analysts, bears, short shills, etc. all focused on next quarter, tomorrow, profitability, regulatory credits, totally missing the big picture. Again, I don't want to shoot the messenger. I'm sure that he's been given the prompt. Mate, you got to find out. Get a soundbite. Get a quote. Get something from Tasha that we can say. This is what we're looking for tomorrow, everybody. Dear viewers, if you see this, buy the stock. If you don't see this, sell the stock. Okay, so on the short-term side, this is not your guys' deep focus, uh, but you do expect profitability for them to pull off again this quarter? You know, we, we don't make a quarter-to-quarter -quarter estimates. Oh, this just hurts to watch. Tasha, tell us what's happening in the next three milliseconds. We don't care about the future. We're not investors. We just want to gamble in the short term. Tasha, something, please. Anybody, my producer's begging me, please tell us something. Okay. Um, but uh, but, but we, what we do know is that, um, you know, battery costs have been declining. Um, my, my partner in LSM course has done a lot of work um, using rights law. Um, to forecast uh, the the cost declines in electric vehicle batteries, and um, you know, as as we've seen in Tesla's announcements, we think we're going to re reach price parity with gas powered cars um, in the next couple of years. Uh, so that's huge because electric vehicles are already cheaper on a total cost of ownership basis, um, but that sticker price um, is really what we're going to think is going to cause a major inflection in demand. Um, so again, as the more batteries Tesla produces, um, the cheaper it becomes to produce them. And uh, we, we heard at Battery Day that they have this um, plan, uh, which, which, by the way, I think a lot of people overlooked. Um, I, I was surprised at the stock's reaction to it. Uh, Tesla plans on cutting, cutting battery costs by over 50% over the next three years. Um, I mean, if you think of any other automaker um, looking at electric technology, which they should be because it's the future, how are you going to catch up with Tesla? Um, because <laughs> not only are their costs becoming cheaper, um, but they're cutting the prices of the cars. Uh, so really, how do you how do you keep up on a, on a price and performance basis? Ooh, that is a good question, Tasha. Let me Google that for you. Can anyone in the automotive industry catch up to Tesla? Hmm. Uh, Tesla has won the decade. Everyone else is fucked. Most of them will go bankrupt or be merged or be acquired said some guy called Stephen Mark Ryan on the internet. Um, well, I don't know if we can trust that dickhead, but hey, I mean, maybe he's right. Here's where it gets really interesting because um, it does seem like all of the long-term visionary projects that Elon has outlined, he has fulfilled, uh, uh, you know, faster than some expectations, in some instances slower. I mean, it depends on his, uh, perspective, but he's fulfilled them and he's moving on. It seems like the battery one was another example here where they're far ahead of the peers. Now, again, I know the long-term focus, but as you mentioned, you were surprised at how the, the chart moved and how the, how the stock responded to that. I mean, how is your team going to look at after this giant move, 740% rally in the stock? I mean, even these quarantine trades that are necessary for life to function right now haven't rallied as much as Tesla over the past year. What are you going to be looking for to kind of connect the dots to find out what moves the stock from here? Six months ago, nine months ago, it was profitability, right? And when Elon pulled that rabbit out of the hat, the stock exploded at a time where people were looking at the chart saying it could break down. That time it was clear. What I'm trying to figure out here is over the next, maybe not this quarter, maybe two, 
what's going to be the thing people hang our hat on for a chart that's also looking pretty darn interesting right now since the high in the summer? What do you want to see, Tasha, did this market really rely on? Dude, please stop asking about what's going to happen in three seconds. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, I'd say that more street analysts are, are catching up to the fact that Tesla's really uh, the leader by far in electric vehicles. We think they're, you know, three to four years ahead of the competition at this point. Um, so I do think that next phase of growth will really be from autonomous technology. Um, so I think these these incremental plans to to roll out the full self-driving um, beta to customers, um, you know, to to, to sort of um, make that path um, to commercialization uh, is, is what sort of gets that the um, certainly the value of Tesla to sort of that next echelon. Mm. Um, but but, you know, again, I, I think people look at the run up and, and if you're sort of concerned, like, does Tesla deserve this? Well, you know, if you look at the rest of the auto industry, I would expect um, some of these companies are going to go out of business as as we transition to electric and autonomous technology, because not every automaker is going to be successful. Certainly many of them are but behind today. Um, and we think this could be a more consolidated market in the future, particularly with autonomous taxis. We think there'll be geographic monopolies. Um, so, so I think that, um, you know, there, there is a lot of value out there to grab for companies like Tesla. Okay, and then uh, the, the last point here, we were going to talk about GM, but this stuff's so exciting. Let's stick with Tesla before we let you go, Tasha. One other thing, because when uh, an investor's looking through the earnings, right, and they say, okay, well, if cash flow is important, I can go there and I can look at it. If we're talking about the automation as being the important catalyst going forward, can you give our viewers kind of a simple thing they want to look for tomorrow, either in the language or something in the report? Uh, what's the line? What's the statement that you want to see where you go, okay, they're moving along at the pace that we expect? Expect. Tasha, please just tell us the one line, the one number, the one word, the one thing I need to know. Is Tesla going to be up tomorrow and in three days or not? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I think it's early days for this rollout again that they just gave to customers. But I, I think it's sort of hearing that pan, that plan for them to start this ride hailing network. And so how, how is that going to look over the mm. next couple of years? And, and hearing that strategy really be laid out because, um, you know, we, we've been ascribing value to the autonomous platform for Tesla for a long time. But I don't think that's something that um, a lot of traditional analysts have done. This is absolutely correct. Hence why traditional auto analysts have been chasing after Tesla stock, consistently raising and raising their price targets and raising and raising again because, oh, wait a minute, they're just a car company. Their valuation doesn't make sense. Wait, why does the stock keep going up anyway? Oh, fuck. Uh, let's raise our price target but not have a reason. And let's just keep a neutral rating on the stock because we don't know what's going on here because... We're not considering autonomy or anything else. Why am I still looking off to the side of the screen? I don't know. This is how I pretend to be, not me. So, so I think that um, you know, helping sort of analysts put, uh, connect the dots together and and sort of figure out that this, you know, we think this should be worth uh, two trillion dollars in the equity markets today. Um, that you know, I, I think sort of uh, showing showing that future will really help others, um, you know, sort of realize that opportunity ahead. Okay, so maybe uh, analysts getting on board will be another catalyst too. There's still, according to Bloomberg's 37-ish they track, 19 still say hold or sell. So plenty of minds to be turned still to the bullish side. Tasha, thanks for coming back on. Appreciate it. Man, it's just so painful to watch. And again, I don't want to shoot the messenger here. I'm sure he had a producer in his ear saying, dude, we need a soundbite, something to quote, a couple of lines, a sentence, something. And guys, don't forget I'll be live streaming Tesla's earning call. I'll post a link to that very soon. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is solving the money problem, and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Webull and Stake using the links below. Open a new Webull account, deposit $100, and you'll get two free stocks valued up to $1,600. And Stake, spin the roulette wheel, you'll either get Nike, GoPro, or Dropbox. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server, and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again